Please welcome to the stage our founder and chief executive officer, Ken Z. Uh, first, thank you for so many people show up here. Uh, the last time we gathered here is about four years ago. Uh, this time we definitely see much more people. Thank you very much for coming to the Fortinet Accelerate 2023. Uh, for me, uh, I probably would thank you. So this probably my 20th time to present uh, in the Accelerate. Uh, it's still pretty much the same concept, the same idea. So I will try to see whether I can twist a little bit, I can have a new angle, and I can convince you a little bit more about convergence and consolidation. Uh, I only have 10 slides. Uh, so, so the first one actually is about convergence. So we have this idea 23 years ago uh, when we started Fortinet. And in the last 23 years, so we keep in invest, we keep in develop. And uh, this is the data come from Gartner recently. They also believe the convergence will happen. And in 2030, the secure networking will be larger than the networking. So we have this thought about 23 years ago and uh, it's finally happening, so I'm pretty happy about it. The reason we see secure networking or overtaking the traditional networking is we do see the current networking and also internet is designed about 50 years ago in 72 or 73. So we're still using the same protocol. When the internet started designing, they, they see everything is the same trust level. They trust everything, basically. So that's where they connect all the people, all the device, all the application, all the content in the same trust level. So that's not the case today. Because today, there's uh, so many different content, so many different applications from different locations, different devices, and people behind it. So you need to handle all this differently. So that's where the network security or secure networking come in. And you can see the secure networking have to deliver the traffic more based on this high layer application content, which also need much more computing power compared to the traditional routing switching, which we're still using today. Uh, so that's how we kind of start in company. Uh, basically secure networking kind of uh, starting like a 15, 20 years after the networking start. Uh, in the like, uh, late 80, early 90, that's where the secure networking started. That's where I started a company uh, uh, like a secure info system and then that screen, then Fortin as a third company. So you can see all these years, secure networking starting getting more and more important because we can, we can address different trust level to process the traffic differently. And now even today, you can work from home or you call the zero trust access that's all depend on secure networking to process the traffic more based on the high layer content application or device user level. So that's the reason we see more and more important secure networking and also starting to take over the traditional networking market. Uh, this one is a kind of a little bit bigger picture for the whole IT space or infrastructure. Uh, you can see what's coming next it's really the IoT device, Internet of Things device. So the 5G or even 6G will enable so many devices connect on the Internet. But they're still using the same protocol, the same networking protocol. They're still not addressing the security side yet, not addressing the counter application side yet. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I'm also amazed uh, when like, I studied Stanford like 30, 40 years ago, how come this internet protocol survived so long for the same protocol? Because it's very, very scalable, very, very resilient. So that's making this protocol keep in surviving, even they don't address any different trust level. That's how network security or secure networking come in 
to help him address the high layer traffic. Uh, you can see, based on the computing power evolution, based on the display evolution, uh, so the food chain for this slice show is also Garner size. I believe some of you see this multiple times because this slice come up about six, seven years ago. I believe I, this is the third time I present this slice. So you can see the food chain here. So when the display comes from terminal to the PC, handle some graphic to the mobile phone, the next one to the emerging, uh, immersive technology is more about wearable, more about all the environment and surface you can display. Then to the computing power, move from the mainframe to the server, then to the cloud, then next one to the edge. So a lot of questions asked about with the cloud, with the mobile, do we still need a network security? So if you look at in the last 10, 20 years, even a lot of applications move to the cloud, but network security is still growing very, very fast, keeping growing like, a, I keep in saying network security keeping growing like a 10 to 20% year over year in the last 20, 30 years. We'll continue to grow this state, uh, this kind of rate in the next 10 to 20 years. It's all because uh, today's networking, today's cloud, the mobile connection, even the new IoT connection, they're still using the same network protocol. They're still not addressing the content layer, the secure networking addressing in the application layer. So that's why when you handle different trust level in different traffic, you do need a secure networking to handle that one. And then that's become more and more important. So these slides combine the slides before. We do see even with the cloud, with the mobile, and next to the edge, secure networking still keeping growing and become more and more important. What grow with the cloud, what grow with all the edge computing, what keeping growing <clears throat> without IoT connection because most IoT device today has a pretty much difficult time to load any security software on it. So the only way to secure this IoT device was by network security. So that's how important network security will be in the next 10, 20 years. We'll continue keeping growing. Uh, this is some kind of result in the last 20 years. Uh, this talk about the whole secure networking of network security, including a firewall, UTM, uh, any other like, uh, like uh, individual intrusion, all these things. You can see last 20 years, we came gaining market share because the convergence, uh, convergence uh, thinking we have and also the investment we made in the area. And, uh, and also going forward, I do believe what we get keeping growing and become more and more kind of uh, uh, important in the space. Uh, so I'm halfway through. Uh, so next is about consolidation. So I think two consolidation I want to talk about. One is a vendor consolidation. Uh, you can see uh, the two biggest market in cybersecurity is endpoint and also network security. Uh, it's pretty interesting uh, in the cybersecurity space, every year there's a new function needed, there's a new vendor come up, but so far no one dominant in the space. It's still very, very fragmented space. The reason is really when some company grow bigger, they're much slower on the innovation, they're much slower come up with a new function. And that's why a lot of company like uh, Symantec in the past endpoint side. Uh, you can see the Cisco, even Palato on the network security side. They depend on acquisition to keep up the change, to come up with a new function needed in the space. And Fortinet is very unique, very different. So we are pretty much the only company we more depend on internal innovation and the internal development to meet the marketing demand, come out of space. So that's the benefit. We have a one platform compared to the multiple platform, whether from Cisco or Palato, which in the network security space, or in the endpoint, there's a lot of acquisition going on there. Uh, so that's where in the network security, the things actually kind of different in the endpoint. Some endpoint, you can load multiple endpoint software in your PC or your mobile phone, as long as you have enough computing power. But in the network security, in the like, IT infrastructure, 
it's very difficult to have a multiple box handle network security. Because for network security, in order to stop the bad content application, you have to be inline. So if you have a multiple inline device, your end up will be too costly, uh, very, very big latency, and very unreliable infrastructure, and very difficult to manage. So if you look at enterprise or some other <coughs> service provider, they mostly only have a one network security device and try to integrate as much function as possible. You can see a lot of uh, individual, uh, we call the, uh, like a single function player, whether the sandboxing, or the like intrusion prevention, uh, or the NAT, or the, or the web firewall, they all kind of disappear after a few years. Once the platform player integrate this function into their platform, so the single individual, uh, uh, like a function vendor has very difficult time to survive in the network security space. Uh, so that's where we see the very important, if we can keep up the innovation, we can keep up all this uh, new function integrate together with existing function as a single platform, it's a huge benefit for the customer because the uniqueness of your display, uh, display all the network security into your infrastructure. So that's how Fortinet want to address this uh, consolidation. Uh, in the vendor consolidation, we do believe if we can keep up all this uh, internal R&D innovation, uh, which we can see in the pattern where we have is probably 3x more than any other competitors. And at the same time, not only we want to keep up innovation, we also want to keep up the improvement. So it's, uh, innovation is the first step, but also we want to integrate. We also want to make it improvement over time make it perfect. Uh, so that's where half the engineer working on innovation, and other half more working on how to improve the integration, the function, and the better performance, lower cost, uh, like whether leverage ASIC chip and have a better OS. Uh, so that's how we kind of keep in improving over the last 23 years, very, very consistent, uh, but also kind of a pretty much all the same, same, same old idea. Uh, now the function consolidation I also want to talk about. Uh, I, I put this in the four different levels uh, from left to right. So the most left side you can see is really the ecosystem. So thank you for our partner. And uh, uh, so we have over 300, uh, we call 40 partner, and over 500 vendor. We integrate all these things together. So that's build a very good ecosystem for the whole cybersecurity space. This is very, very important for us to success because you cannot depend on a single vendor to make your infrastructure more secure. It has to be working together. We realize that one. And we also appreciate all the partners working together with us. Then the second one is we call the 40 fabric. We keep in talk about fabric for more than 10 years. So right now we have a 53 product pretty much all starting with a 40 something, like a 40 web, 40 mail, uh, 40 client, and uh, 40 sandboxing, for even 40 phone, all these things. So that's the fabric product, also mostly developed in-house. Make it integrate and automate from day one, which is also very different than other competitors, which most of their other product come from acquisition and also don't have the broad coverage as we have in the fabric level. Then the third one is the OS level, the platform. One single platform can cover all the network security function needed. So we have over 30 major function. Uh, even today, announced the new 40 OS. So every year we do announce one major release in the 40 OS. Uh, right now it's the 40 OS 7.4. Last year it's 7.2. <clears throat> you can see uh, in the OS level, so we keep in adding new function. That's very, very important. Even the company get bigger, we want to make sure we cover the new function, we can continue to grow with the market. If we really slow down, then we probably will be in trouble, more like some other competitor. You have to go acquisition, uh, which will be very difficult to do the integration, especially in the OS level. So that's where it's very, very important, come up with the innovation, keep up the new function, development. But of these 30 plus main function, the next level is ASIC. We need to use ASIC to accelerate this function. So we have a room 
to run the new function. At the same time, we can also address the speed need because speed go faster and faster every year. So that's where uh, probably this is the first time in the last 20 years we started to disclose the detail of a 40 ASIC. Uh, you all have a copy brochure uh, on your seat. On the cover page, there's some detailed information about 40 ASIC we announced about, I think, a, two, a few weeks ago. Uh, you can see uh, from each generation, we almost double the application can use in ASIC to accelerate. Now the new SP5 can accelerate 14 for application there. And when we move application to the ASIC level, they tend to improve in speed about 10x. At the same time, free up the CPU. We have the same general purpose CPU as any other competitors. Free up the CPU to cover the new function, which is also very, very important. Uh, so that's gave us a keeping improving and perfect the solution there. At the same, same time, uh, keeping changing the space, gave the new function. So that's where the AC gave us huge advantage, differentiating us from other competitors because the huge company power needed in the secure networking. And that's also by the ASIC and also lower the cost at the same time uh, keeping adding more function there. I think I pretty much run out of time. Uh, <clears throat> cannot say anything without talking about SASE and service because the service is the most important part in the cybersecurity. It's not the product, it's like actually it's the service because uh, security is more difficult to handle. That's why all the service provider is very, very important. We also uh, uh, see the importance of a service provider. Uh, we want to partner together from day one. And uh, look back to 10, 20 years ago, service provider is also the biggest sector for Fortinet. So we see the importance of the service and how to address today's service. Because today, there's so many ways you can connect to the internet compared to 10, 20 years ago. Now, time, most enterprise connections all go through a few internet connections. Uh, they call enterprise firewall. Now you can access internet easily from home. You can also access all these different ways in the, in, the, in the working environment, even working from home there. So that's how to manage the security service with all this new connection, new access, and at the same time, uh, like uh, pretty much working everywhere, anywhere. Uh, so that's where we do see the important SASE the service there. But we also want to address this differently because we do believe in order to do the service, you need to make sure the service more scalable, more reliable, also more broadly applied to the customer environment. It's not just go through the cloud or go through some SASE provider only. You have to address the customer need on premise, in the cloud, work from home, but also not just mobile phone or mobile uh, laptop, but also between application, between data center, between the service, uh, between all the servers. Uh, so that's why we see the SASE need to be integrated together, need to be in the same platform, the same OS, uh, just like other networking function, like SD-WAN we have, just like all these even going forward the 5G, and also the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi and the 6G, a little bit similarity there. So all need to be integrated together with all the security service the service provider can provide to the customer base. So that's what we see. The service provider will play a very, very important role uh, to the SASE, and we want to build the best product to support the service provider. So making their security service more scalable, more broadly, more resilient, and at the same time, uh, can be more cost efficient, and uh, they can also benefit from all these services they provide. So that's our vision about universal SASE. Uh, I think the, the uh, John uh, Madison and also Robert May will talk more about all this. Uh, so that's where, different from other competitor, we want to have an integrated and also one platform SASE solution compared to all these other uh, kind of uh, different SASE provider. Uh, this also talk about one platform advantage compared to some other vendor has a multiple platform for each for different kind of magic quadrant. We have the same OS, same platform, uh, lead multiple magic quadrant. So that's also very different than other competitors. So this last slide, uh, kind of uh, using the data to summarize 
the convergence and the consolidation. So on the left side is the, the five new 40K product we released in the last few quarter. We kind of summarize all together. So on average, we have probably like a five to 10 times better performance on all the top seven network security function needed. So I don't see any other competitor, any other vendor release all this we call secure computing rating. So it's basically for the same function, for the same cost, how much performance advantage we have compared to competitor. On the right side, I use the example about how much energy saving we have. So that's enable us to deploy secure networking in much broader environment, in much more use case than any other competitor. That's also make us believe that the product growth and also network security or secure networking will keep growing 10 to 20% in the next 10 to 20 years. It's not some competitors that only grow low single digit. Because the technology, because the investment we made, because all this data we're showing here, uh, so we do see uh, kind of uh, the benefit of a convergence and consolidation the investment we made, and also uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, uh, the partner we all here kind of supporting together. So we see it's a, it's a, it's a huge potential going forward. Uh, so with that, let me turn to John Madison. Thank you. <laughs>